David Simke Levy, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks very much for taking the time to speak with us. We want to talk about what is next for supply chains as the country looks to reopen after the quarantine, assuming that reopening is even a good idea. But what are some initiatives that companies should be exploring right now as they move toward the concept of a restart? Yeah. Maybe before we jump into uh, what companies need to do, we should think about uh, supply chain uh, in the last 10 years. Okay. And why we have seen this significant increase in supply chain risk. And I would argue that in part, it, <clears throat> it is because of successful implementation of strategies like clean, like uh, outsourcing, offshoring, and consolidation. For example, what does lean mean? Lean implies low level of inventory. Low level of inventory suggests that if there is a disruption, the supply chain will not be able to make supply with demand. Consolidation, outsourcing, offshoring, all imply that the supply chain is geographically more concentrated. As a result, if there is a disruption, all your supply located in one region may, may be uh, disrupted. And we have seen this uh, in the last 10 years with events like the tsunami in Japan, the flood uh, in uh, Thailand, uh, if you remember the volcano eruption in Iceland in 2010, sure. and we saw uh, um, some companies were able to successfully recover from this type of disruption, uh, and we can learn from them, but of course the magnitude of what we see today is um, significantly different. So, so what yeah. can companies do? And I think an understanding what happened over the last 10 years is very important because the increase in risk is because of the focus on low cost strategies. Strategies that allow companies to reduce cost and emphasize efficiency. What we need is to find the right balance between efficiency and resiliency. What we need is to take our supply chain through what I call now stress tests that allow us to identify hidden risk in the supply chain. And as a result, take corrective action before a disruption occurs. And we can talk about the detail. But at a yeah. high level, this balancing act between efficiency and resiliency should be the focus of the next generation supply chain. But what does this stress test consist of? Is, kind of a, is it a virtual experiment? Is it done by computer? Is it done by exercises? What exactly does it consist of? Stress tests are data-driven tests where you simulate your supply chain. You simulate a disruption in a specific facility or for a collection of, or a group of facilities say all located in a certain region, and you try to answer a few questions. Here is an example. You try to answer the question, how long can I make supply with demand when this facility or group of facilities are down? It's not necessarily zero because the supply chain uh, may be full with inventory, but I can estimate this. And if I have the right KPI, I can measure the performance relative to what I'm trying to achieve and identify uh, what is the risk exposure, but also more importantly, identify hidden risk in my business. Typically, we say, oh, risk is associated with large strategic suppliers. When you take your supply chain through this type of stress test, you may be surprised to find that risk is not necessarily associated, the high risk is not necessarily associated with a strategic supplier. It may be associated with a small supplier providing a critical component that may cost 10 cents. Mm -hmm. And the reason I mention this is because we have done at MIT a lot of work with a number of companies in this area. And this is typically what we find. 
Mm, up multiple tiers of the supply chain. But here we have a situation, even if companies were doing planning for a potential pandemic, and I suspect that a number of them were not, they were probably looking at that pandemic as being something that would be fairly localized in impact, such as previous ones were. They weren't prepared for something that would include the entire world. Should they have been better prepared or were they just, is this just something that no one could possibly have imagined? I think uh, looking forward, we need to uh, take as an example what we have seen in the banking industry. If you remember in the banking industry after 2008, we saw the government, in fact, government in the US, the federal government and in Europe established mandatory st stress tests that the banking industry should uh, take. Similarly here, for critical products, for mm -hmm. critical services, think about PPEs, think about ventilators, think about medical products. For this type of product, in this type of supply chain, you can envision government, say in the US, the CDC, uh, asking companies, requiring from companies to satisfy certain or to show that they pass certain stress tests. And this does not necessarily imply increasing costs. This implies identifying where are the potential problem and changing your supply chain strategy to make sure that you are able to respond when there is uh, a disruption. Do you think that technology solutions that are available today in the form of analytics, artificial intelligence, big data, and the like, equips companies better than ever before in exploring the complexities and the many possibilities of a supply chain disruption? Are they better equipped going forward than they were before? No question that the data that we have, the technology, especially uh, analytics like AI and machine learning help us better understand the supply chain and better prepare. But this is not just about using analytics and machine learning. This is about also a lot of time rethinking your supply chain strategy and designing um, a new supply chain strategy that uh, allows you to um, source product from different locations depending on where disruption happens. So data and analytics is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, we need also to improve our capability to use data and analytics. Let's give specific example. Uh, most companies have seen significant impact of the pandemic on their demand. We are not there yet to use data and analytics to predict the demand under an event like uh, we see today, but there are some capabilities that we see uh, that we can use to complement machine learning and AI that will allow us in the future to better predict customer demand during a disruption of the types that we see today. Mm -hmm. But you are arguing, it sounds like going forward, that there's going to be a much more, a need for a much more intense type of exercise than companies have, have conducted before. Knowing now the severity of what could happen. They're going to have to change their strategy, right? Exactly. And one important essential requirement as part of this uh, stress test is to have a good, reliable mapping of your supply chain. I, I did an experiment last week. I gave a talk to hundreds of companies and I asked two questions. One question was, do you have, uh, have you mapped your supply chain? And about 70% of the company said yes. But mm -hmm. then I asked, do you know and have you mapped your supplier's network? The answer was only 30% had a good understanding of their tier two uh, suppliers. Mm -hmm. That's part of the challenge because you may be thinking, I am not exposed to risk because my supplier, say, is in Europe. But this supplier may be getting components an inventory from another supplier in Asia, and this supplier in Asia may be disrupted, affecting the entire supply chain. But isn't that by definition part of your supply chain? Multiple tiers, it's all your supply chain. It's and not yet, just tier one. And yet, so, and and yet, yet. 70% <laughs> said we don't have a good understanding of our supplier network.
So the true, an the, the true answer to your asking, have you mapped your supply chain? The true answer was no, exactly. <laughs> even, even though they claim to have done so. But they took a local view uh, of what is supply chain mapping, only mm -hmm. their suppliers, not understanding that what is critical is not only their supplier, but the supplier suppliers. Okay. So going forward now, companies are looking to reopen and get restarted. What, they should, what should they be doing now to kind of just somehow get, get moving and then look ahead at some type of analysis in the future? I mean, can you give us some tips on just how to get started out of this disastrous situation? So, so given uh, what we see right now, there are a couple of steps that companies need to take immediately to uh, come up with a recovery plan. Mm -hmm. The first step is supply chain mapping. Without understanding my supply chain, I cannot come up with a recovery plan. And this may mean working with a number of technology companies. This may mean uh, uh, asking our buyers to um, be on the phone, and get information about uh, the supplier suppliers. Also, this means thinking carefully about different scenarios. Given a scenario, you can estimate um, what is the time to recover, how long it will take for a facility or a group of suppliers to recover, and this can be based on quarantine time. We know, for example, that in Europe, in Europe quarantine time in certain region will be um, over by mid-May. Uh, that means that you have between now and mid-May, maybe three weeks to recover to full functionality. This can be an input to the recovery plan. Given recovery time, you try to estimate what is the impact on my ability to match supply with demand. Do I need to expedite? How long do I need to expedite? When should I ramp up production? Basically apply an SNOP process, taking into account the various scenarios that uh, you have identified. Interesting. So some of the tools are already there. As you say, SNOP has been there, artificial intelligence, machine exactly. learning, risk exactly. management awareness. So there are things that companies can use to avail, to avail themselves of to, to move forward right now. David Simcha Levy, thank you so much for sharing your insights about how companies can restart and maybe how they can go forward and, and mitigate the impact of future such disasters. Thanks very much for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you.